Thanks for staying with us now, Sheikh Rashid. When asked the future of his country, what the future would be like for his country, he said, my grandfather was on a camel, my father was on a camel, I'm in a Mercedes, my son is on Land Rover, and my grandson is going to be from Land Rover, but my great-grandson will be back on a camel. Why is that? He said, tough times create strong men. Strong men create easy times. Easy times create weak men, and weak men create tough, tough times. times. Many won't understand, but you have to raise warriors, not parasites. That's what, mm -hmm. how he ended that conversation. So with our current realities, right of nigeria of high level of corruption impunity self-centeredness irresponsibility complete non-challenged disposition amongst our leaders and young people what is the future of nigeria that's our question now let us hear what you have to say remember you can join this conversation tweet at us at we show africa one with the hashtag we show or send us an sms or whatsapp to 081 so when i saw this um quote this picture that we found right and the saying from the sheikh i said ah. there are so many angles to this you know i thought about succession plan that's why we do not have transgenerational businesses transgenerational companies where you know the man struggled became a billionaire built an empire and now the children are just there throwing all the money away because they do not even understand the basis. The basis. No, even the, 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 the suffering and everything. So to them is nothing. So when he says he would, they will go back to camels, you know, so that's the angle I saw with some businesses. I said, it's possible that I would not. Then also, I looked at leadership in Nigeria, right? If you're saying this procession, what is going to happen to Nigeria if Tomorrow, right, if this is what we have today, this is our today, this is our reality, corruption, impunity, and everything, what will happen, you know, tomorrow? Would it be an, a, a graduated corruption or maybe to go full circle and come back to maybe when people will begin to value things? I don't know. Because um, President Muhammad Buhari, when he was, um, first of all, when he first came into power as head of state, head of state you know, he, his mantra was corruption. It was this, it was that. It was, you know, it was a lot of things. And he, I mean, the people that knew him then said that together with the Diagwa, they did a lot of work building and pushing, trying to build Nigeria until it was cut short, the, the, his tenure was cut short. Now, a lot of people use that as a um, yardstick for uh, yes, now. that that understanding that they had of him as a foundation for re-electing people like us. We re-elected him in 2015, hoping because he came with this strong corruption. But now we're seeing that it's almost like a times 50 of even the, the, the corruption that he met, you know, in his tenure. So let me just, I mean, that's my thinking in my head. So well, I want to hear your what's thoughts. The next, so what's the nexus between that time and no, now? How do you, that's what I'm you asking. connect it? No, no, that's why I'm asking that. that. Is it not supposed to be like, I mean, I don't know. No, it's, it's quite different. Mm. And you need to understand that when he came in as the head of state, he came in during the military era. Mm. There were no constitution. The judges were afraid to do their jobs. There was no press, uh, freedom of the press. And juxtapose that with the current um, democracy that we operate at the moment, and with his physical and mental status, mm -hmm. is not possible. And don't forget, how many were we in? 1983 and what's, the, what's our reality and now? now so he didn't have the wherewithal he didn't have any of the capacity whether social mental physical economic wise to lead nigeria i think it was just an obsession for him i want to come back and at that time it was good for him to come back because it was just nigerians were tired mm. we thought we had had it all we mm -hmm. didn't know we were even in for more because <laughs> it was just anything but Jonathan, Jonathan yeah, because we thought that we did not understand that beyond somebody be beyond the cloth of um, um, the issue of integrity, there's a lot more to a leader. Yeah. We were just focused on his integrity, absolutely. So, when we are talking about weak institutions, I mean, weak leaders creating um, this kind of weak institutions, let me come to Uti. When you saw the, when you saw the quote from the Sheikh, what, what came to your mind? Well, I mean, the first thing first is I read it a couple of times. It kind of felt to me like, what's going on? Um, it didn't make sense the first time I read it. So I read it, and then I read it again, and I read it a third time. Mm -hmm. And then it hit me. 
they say, oh, now I get it. You know, that thing about, and we've talked about it, right, with the, the, the companies and not, you know, the generations where we have all these great companies that are lost. I didn't even relate it to Nigeria, but it sort of told the story of values. And you know how big I am on values, right? Mm -hmm. How I keep saying it, that we are eroding our values, we're eroding our culture. We keep thinking, you know, different is better, from the West is better, and we don't have anything to show for it. Well, except maybe more corruption. So it was sort of something that made it hit home for me in terms of what we should be looking at as a people. If we are not going to hold on to our values because we've lost the values of hard work, we have no work ethics. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's not fair to say no work ethics. But I mean, we can see where we are today. The reality of it is if we're looking at tomorrow, this is the toughest of times. And it should be breeding the best of people. That's my point. My question is, is it doing that? That's and I don't know that I can say 100% that it is. But that being said, the young people have also shown us that they are capable of being able to mobilize and do great things. An eye opener for us, whether you agree or not. Yeah. So uh, the question I'm talking about, relating it to Nigeria, right? We are in the toughest of times in terms of, I mean, everything seems like, but we are not seeing that great innovation come into life. Because it seems like this principle about weak people, this one, that is not working here. It's like we are deteriorating. We are going backwards because I'm not seeing. But I think it is. Are you sure? He's saying, my mom has always told me that in Yoruba, she says it that. Mm -hmm. which means that children of strong people become weak and children of weak people become strong. strong yes because when you are strong you want to step in for your children mm. you want to you don't want them to go through what you've done sorry what you've gone through yeah so instead of allowing them make their mistakes being who they are supposed to be, you're stepping for them at every little instance. And in the process, you weaken the children. Hmm. So I think that is what we're seeing. I, for once, you know me, I'm always big on discipline and all that. There's a lot of, um, this generation, I am scared for the next generation, not even our generation. I am scared for the next generation because I always look at, when we leave, we're supposed to leave a legacy. And what is our legacy? Our children. And are we doing a good job of that? You go to schools who are starting from schools. In the morning, you know, I always wonder if the resumption time had changed. I go to drop my child at 7.50. I ensure she's in school at 7.50 because the school told me their resumption is 8. I don't want to start struggling and running, so I ensure she's in school at 8.50. And yeah, by the time... you mean? Sorry, 7.50. By the time I'm turning back and driving towards my home, it's always like 8.20. I see children and their parents lazing on the streets, taking them to school. No sense of emergency. When we were in school, if you, are, if you don't get to the assembly by 8 o'clock, <laughs> you are going to be in the farm all through. So really, I don't understand. I kept on asking. Even the one that really troubles me is school buses. I see children in school buses are past eight. Hmm. Ah, the school cannot even enforce discipline. If you're supposed to pick up a child at a particular time, if the bus does the horn one, two, three times, if the child is not, don't wait for the child. Hmm. Go and pick up the next child. Then you see all these children, they go. So children that even go on the school buses, even get to school, late, get to school later than children that their parents supposedly come to drop. Mm. So the whole system, the educational system, the schools cannot enforce discipline again because of the love of money. Mm. Because parents, parents are now the bosses of the school. They, they tell the school what they want. I remember during PTA, PTA used to be very heated in those days. Teachers will say their minds, the principal, the teacher, used to be very, but now they've completely, you know, because they don't, you'll see children, I know a four-year-old that was admitted into primary one in this Nigeria, and I was wondering, what school, they said, <laughs> ah, if the school doesn't admit her, somebody, another somebody school, else said, so there are no standards mm. anymore for the love of money. So the standards across board is for, well, yeah. And let me tell you something the number one way we can build future leaders 
Ooh, the starting point is that academic excellence. Academic excellence to me is nothing if it doesn't have a foundation. And what's the foundation? Discipline. Character. Character mm. Ooh, and resilience. Mm. If, you have a, if, you, if you have a child that is not resilient, Ooh, that child can never function in life. Okay, so I want to go back to the quotes, right? When he says, hard times create strong men. And I want to come to Uti. Strong men create good times, right? Good times create weak men, and weak men create hard times. So the question I'm asking right now in Nigeria, is it that our leadership right, structure is filled with a lot of weak men? Because ah, we are clearly... clearly. <laughs> so, Apparently. Wait, <laughs> is Uti I'm asking? <laughs> Uti, you know... So is it that oh, we... Why are you going to ask me that kind of question? I have to ask you that question. Why? why? <laughs> so, so you, 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 you. I thought you loved me. I you love you. <laughs> to call the leadership of this country weak so they can come Ooh, for me. But it's not time. an insult. <laughs> no. Weakness is not an insult. So, so if, if, I, if I want to take the definition of weakness there, then I say it's the ability to take the tough decisions the ability to do what's right no matter what. Are they doing that? No. I think that greed, selfishness, which is the foundation of, has become a very big. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm going to say the thing that you guys have heard me say many times. I don't believe democracy is for us. It doesn't work. Not for everybody. We don't have the, the grounding for it. I say we have to find something between full-on dictatorship and democracy. Find one parent. Imagine that Nigeria as a country is a family of 200 two-year-old children. Go and find one person who is a parent that loves everybody selflessly, will do what's right for you, will do what's best. Not quite a dictator where he's willing to kill a few million, but he loves everybody equally and he'll do what's right, even when we don't like it. But in the long run, we'll find out that it works for us. Can we have that? then I will say that it's fine. So do we take the tough decisions? No. Do we do what's right? No. We're self-serving. I've had conversations with people about the power sector, about education, about healthcare. So unanimously across board, everybody says the same thing. Nigeria has the capacity, it can be better. But our leaders benefit. Too many people are benefiting from the things that are happening in Nigeria today. May not be you and I, so we can cry corruption, but for those people, they're crying connection up and down thinking they're God at the expense of 200 million people. Hmm. So are they weak in that sense? Absolutely. Oh, wow. Lami, someone says, well done. Bel Benson says, Lami, well done for the explanation. Thank you. They're already liking you. So you, what do you think, right? I understand that we have weak leaders, right? Um, if we were, to, if we were to, to ask a question, right, how did we get to this point? Because I'm trying to, for us to sort, find a solution to the problem. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying this in the last um, couple of times. I yes. Mean, and I'll go back to you. We I'll, have to, I will we link have to repeat it together. It. I will link to it together. It. Yeah. Let me tell you something. When we got our independence in 1960, Nigeria was already divided along ethnic lines, lines hmm. the south, north, and the east. And all the political parties had ethnic affiliations. So our foundation was based on ethnicity. So for us, and that's that preaching unity and all that is artificial. Now, at that time, because of the kind of government, of the kind of style of leadership, of government we, we, we practice, which we think federalism, the only way to economic power in the corrupt system we have is to have political power. Mm. So every tribe starts to struggle because if you don't struggle to get your person there, there is no way for economic advancement mm. for those kind of people. So for you to, in, an average person feels that the easiest way to economic, to gain economic power in Nigeria is to have access to government money. Politics, yes. Do you understand? So it will get tougher and tougher because the positions are too lucrative. But the moment you devolve it from the top, we devolve it into regional power. Everybody go and face your region. Mm. Then we make the local government even more powerful. Oh, okay. There are about 774 local governments in Nigeria. So the power scramble will now be between 774 people and probably 36 governors. Mm. Do you understand? 
or if they're going to merge it or something. Mm -hmm. So the, the center will not be attractive anymore. But the moment we still operate what we are operating, it will still be the same. Because if your own person is not in power, development is not coming to your state. Your own people will not be empowered. You're, you won't get IG. So because we are already... You won't get the... the, 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 the what's it called? The, yes, you won't get from the customs <laughs> and all that. It's too lucrative. The power in the center is too much for nothing. Okay. For nothing. Mm. So if we don't look into that, it will still be the same. Let me tell you, go and get a saint mm. to become the president of Nigeria in 2023. The problems will not leave because we are not tackling the problem from the foundation. Mm. The way we were cultured, the way we were, um, how do I call it, molded, the colonial, the imperialist molded us along ethnic groups. Mm. It's too late in the day to now form one youth. It is not going to work. Uh, but okay, now, let me that, and uh, Uti, that we are all infested with no, weak no, leaders. Yes, quickly. Ula, the selfish leaders, not we weak. Are, we are weak <laughs> now. It's weak. Selfishness is a sign of weakness. And materialistic. No, 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 no. I think that, you know, Lam is making a very valid point there because the reality of it is that when it's at the center, there's no need for creativity. State governors right now could do so much more than they're doing to lift their states out of poverty. You know, we talk about Lagos and the fierceness with which they go after IGR. But there's so many states that could be doing so much more. Mm -hmm. We've talked about so many things. I remember somebody gave me a breakdown about two weeks ago. This whole fight about Fulanis and cattle. What other countries are making from exporting beef would make you... I mean, it would solve so many problems. And there are states that have the land for it. Mm -hmm. But because we all are facing the center, we all haven't woken up to the realities that we are spending more than we are earning. What We're spending like 90% of our, of our income servicing debt. And we are still focused on oil. Like yeah. the world has woken up, Nigeria is still sleeping, thinking that a miracle is going to happen. War will start somewhere and all of a sudden crude will be back on top. We're not facing the realities, which is why we keep running the same playbook. Every two, three years, we devalue the Naira and we wonder why things are getting worse. Hmm. I mean, we are literally becoming, you know, this is, this is the, the quote, right? Weak men. I, I, I just don't even know how to explain it, but we, we just can keep doing the same thing. And we expect a different result. What's what the definition? You know, before you add, let's go on a break. <laughs> because, because now I'm just trying to find... A so you know, I keep saying this in Lamy. This your solution is perfect. It's the ideal. But, but we have the nerves. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, because the system is already infested with this weak set of leaders you know the that cannot be strong enough to take the decision what? that is greater than themselves. What? But let's take a break. My God, I shut him. Yeah. We'll come back. We'll, right back. we'll open the phone lines then. <laughs>